Welcome to the News Hour. The United States has once again vetoed a draft resolution on Gaza at the UN Security Council. It's the third veto by the US since the start of the war. The text, put forward by Algeria, called for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire and had 13 members voting in favour of it. The US was the only country to vote against it. We are rapidly approaching a critical juncture where the call to halt the machinery of violence will lose its significance. Today, every Palestinian is a target for death, extermination, and genocide. We should ask ourselves how many innocent lives must be sacrificed before the Council deems it necessary to call for a ceasefire. Now, the US ambassador to the UN says that while they rejected the text presented by Algeria, they'll be putting forward a rival resolution calling for a temporary ceasefire. While numerous parties engage in sensitive negotiations, this is not the time for this resolution, which jeopardizes these efforts. Colleagues, I communicated our concerns publicly and privately over the last several weeks. We've submitted numerous rounds of edits. All were ignored. And so for that reason, the United States has offered an alternative resolution that would do what this text does not. Pressure Hamas to take the hostage deal that is on the table and help secure a pause that allows humanitarian assistance to reach Palestinian civilians in desperate need. Well, in a moment, we'll get reaction in Gaza with our correspondent Tarek Abu Azim. But first, let's cross over to our diplomatic editor, James Bays, at the United Nations. And James, often diplomats play their cards very close to their chest when it comes to voting in the Security Council. But I think we had an inkling of what was going to happen today. Uh, we knew what was going to happen today, and I'm afraid we're seeing exactly the same picture that we've seen a number of times before. This is the third, sorry, the fourth time that the U.S. has vetoed the idea of a ceasefire in the U.N. Security Council. And remember, this resolution demanding an immediate ceasefire in Gaza would have passed if it wasn't for the United States uh, using its veto power as a permanent member of the Security Council. Every other member of the Security Council voted for it, apart from the UK. The UK ambassador, Barbara Woodward, is uh, explaining her vote to the Security Council right now. They abstained, though. Even though they're also a permanent member, that would not have blocked it. It's only the US that again has blocked this from happening uh, and says this is not the right time and says it's coming up with its own resolution and says that it needs to delay and negotiate that. But, of course, in Gaza, delay means death. Every single day, Israel is killing more and more Palestinians, and that is what will result from this uh, resolution. It's worth uh, giving you the U.S.'s reason, the main reason, which they say is those ongoing negotiations uh, that have taken place uh, involving Israel, involving Hamas indirectly, uh, and with the intermediaries of Qatar and Egypt. But we know those negotiations are not going particularly well, and we know that two of the key players, Egypt and Qatar do not have any problem with that uh, resolution that Algeria was uh, promoting and that was voted down by the US just now. In fact, they supported that resolution. Uh, and James, looking ahead, obviously the US now wants to present its own version of a resolution. The question will be, will it be accepted by the Security Council? Because one of the most sort of vociferous replies to what happened today came from Russia's ambassador at the Security Council. Yeah, the, Ru the Russians are very, very strong on this. They're making the point that they were the very first uh, in a Security Council resolution or draft resolution that didn't get adopted to come up with the idea of a ceasefire, immediate ceasefire. That was back in October when the death toll was about 1,000 and now the death toll stands at about 30,000. So on this issue, Russia believes that it uh, has the moral 
high ground. Uh, what will happen with regard to the U this US um, uh, draft resolution? It's not actually even been formally presented to the Security Council by the United States. Uh, we believe that will happen in the coming days, and they don't seem to be in a great hurry. Uh, they say, um, they've said to reporters they're not in a great hu hurry to see a Security Council uh, resolution in place, but they've put forward what they say are the ideas they'd like to see eventually in a resolution. It's quite a, a extensive document the US have presented, um, some of it talking about reconstruction of Gaza and things that are much further down the line. There are elements there that I think will be supported by much of the Security Council, particularly a paragraph on Rafa, in which the US says that an Israeli ground offensive should not uh, proceed. But there are other parts of it, particularly on the language of a ceasefire. Um, everyone on the Security Council, with the exception of the UK and the US, wants to see an immediate ceasefire forced by the Security Council now. This new resolution talks about a temporary ceasefire as soon as is practicable. So the idea of a ceasefire, not one being ordered right now by the Security Council. And I think that may well be a deal breaker for other members of the Council. But as I say, I think we're looking at a period now, again, of negotiation on that uh, US text. But I suspect other Council members will also uh, be trying to add things to that text or take things out of that text. James Bays, our diplomatic editor there at the UN. Thank you. Let's cross over to Rafa now, where Tarek Abu Azoum uh, joins us now. And Tarek, I suppose hopes of a, a ceasefire dashed once again for people who were living in hope. Yes, in fact, so hell, Palestinians are seeing that the, uh, the the window of hope is getting much more narrow right now after the U.S. A rejection of the Algerian uh, draft for a ceasefire proposal that might bring an end for the fighting here on the ground. But Palestinians, in fact, has a great sentiment now of frustration as, been, as they have been seeing that all diplomatic efforts have been uh, shot down by uh, Israel's closest delay as a kind of further permission to continue their atrocities and their genocidal acts here on the ground inside Gaza as bombardment continue to unfolding all the all parts of the territory and alongside that people within this rejection will be also much more uh, 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 living under un, uh, human conditions specifically people in the northern part of Gaza and with the predictable suspension of aid deliveries by the World Food Programme to the northern part of the territory it seems that's going to be much more difficult days for Palestinians in the north to uh, experience, uh, specifically that negotiations are still going on in Egypt for uh, reaching a ceasefire. But till now, there is no any kind of serious breakthrough in terms of uh, these efforts, as Palestinians here are really hoping that uh, they might uh, reach to an end for the fighting on the ground. But they are completely, right now, have been let down again by the American administration to stop the bloodshed.